Hello and welcome to Jill Cameron Creations. I'm super excited to announce that I am on the design team for the Hedgehog Hollow. And this is my first project. It is for the September kit that's coming out and it is a collaboration with Sophia Caldwell. And we're gonna be using the stamp set that is Peacock Silhouettes and Sentiments. I'm doing something a little different. Most of y'all know that I love Copic coloring, but when I saw this peacock, I knew I just had to watercolor it. That was just the only way I was gonna do this thing justice. It's beautiful. So the first thing that I'm doing is I cut down a piece of uh, watercolor paper, and I use Strathmore 400 series watercolor paper because I'm not a big watercolor, so I'm not gonna spend buckets and buckets of money on the watercolor paper. This does a perfect job for me. And I wanted to make sure that my my um, thing in my Misty was clean because it had some ink spots on it. I do cut my paper down to a little bit larger than what I'm going to need for when I'm watercoloring because I'm going to tape this down to a board and I want to make sure that I'm not going to cut off anything that I'm planning on watercoloring. So I'm making sure that where the, the lowest point is going to be on my image. So and where I'm gonna watercolor and then I'm gonna move it down a little bit because I kind of want this not to be centered. I want my image to be in the lower right corner a little bit. So I'm going to do some heat embossing. So the first thing I'm gonna do, of course, is treat with anti-static powder tool and I'm gonna stamp in Versamark ink, clear sticky ink. And the embossing powder I'm using is Ranger Liquid Platinum Embossing Powder. I thought about doing it in black, but the black was just too bold for me, and white what didn't stand out enough, so I went with something a little bit different, which was this liquid platinum. I wanted this to have a little bit of an artsy feel to it, so I did mash down a little bit on that stamp instead of just putting it down on the paper so that I knew that it would have a nice detailed outline. Don't get me wrong, these stamps are beautiful in that detailed outline. I'm going to show how detailed they are when I do the sentiment because it's super detailed and really small and, and dainty and it's absolutely beautiful. So we're going to hit that with the heat gun and set that to the side for a second and let it cool off. The other things that I have on my desk here are the Alta New Pan watercolors and I also have that uh, acry white acrylic sheet setting over to my left there and you'll see me mix on that in just a moment. I'm going to use the VersaFine Black Onyx ink for the sentiment and I'm going to heat set that with a clear embossing powder so that's setting off to my side as well. I didn't edit out a whole lot of this video because I was super super efficient. Fantastic. All of the products that I'm using are going to be linked below um, minus the washi tape. <laughs> uh, you probably have a million things of washi tape in your stash. Use it in whatever main way you want to. I use it for just about everything from holding down my dies when I'm die cutting to, as you can see, holding down paper for my uh, watercolor. The board I'm using is just from a, a kitchen set. Um, it, it's nothing fancy. You can pick one up at your local Walmart. Uh, you can probably pick one up over on Amazon. And it's just a hard board. It's a chopping board from for kitchens. That's what that board is. Um, and then off to my right there, you will see two little bowls and they look like there's nothing in them. It's water in them. I have one that I will clean my watercolor with. And then I also have one that I will ha keep clean instead of using dirty water. I'm going to be using some Nuvo paint brushes. I really like them just because I don't I, I'm not somebody that watercolors a great deal, so I don't need super expensive fancy brushes. Nuvo makes a great set of brushes, and I'm just putting some water over here on the left on my board so that I can mix my watercolor on my board a little bit and have little puddles left over of the exact color, and I can decide what kind of intensity I'm going to do. Now, I did, I did a dry on to with a wet paintbrush. I didn't do like wet on wet or anything like that because what I'm doing first is I want to do a wash and I am going to dry in between these but I didn't want this to go all over the place and I wanted it to have a very very light effect in the background and I really really wanted it to be off to the side there. I didn't want the left hand side of the card to have anything at all on it. So I'm literally just putting some color down and then I am um, 
drying it in between the layers a little bit and I'm but I'm not using a lot of water and I'm gonna switch to a smaller brush here in just a second so I sped the next part of the video up because this was about 45 minutes of me watercoloring so I made the next part super fast um, what I did was I took the same color that was in the background and just added more pigment to it so that it was a lot deeper and a lot darker and I went through several different colors I, and they were mostly teals and dark blues and um, purples purple is my favorite color as y'all know so I definitely did the most in purple when I get to the purple I actually bring it back down into the other colors and let it all mix together I wanted this to look really really arty I didn't want it to be individual feathers I wanted it to be a gradation of different colors and that's exactly what I got when I did this and it was absolutely beautiful um, I also left my mistakes in here as you can see right here I puddled big huge puddle big huge puddle so I went back in and that's where I pulled the color back down with now the other thing that I did here was I just rinsed my brush off and got the color out of it and used a relatively dry brush to pull up those puddles a little bit and my heat gun is in on the back of my table and the cord is going behind it so I have to mess with it sometimes now I'm thinking about redoing that but anyway because if you've ever watched any of my videos before in the last couple you see that there's a new uh, craft room tour and it's because I moved my craft room from my basement to my back bedroom anyway I wanted a little bit more color around the edge a little bit deeper color because after I actually put the color in the peacock it really washed the background out completely so what I did here was literally just add some more of those colors in the background here and then I took a paper towel and softened it back out so that the edges of it would uh, soften out I also let this dry I hit it again with the heat tool and dried it really really well and got all of the the um, excess water off of the top of it and let it dry and then I pulled out um, Oh, I forgot I went back in and colored the body of the little peacock again and I kind of messed it up and it had this really hard weird line in it and I didn't like it so I ended up having to take a um, a wet brush and really get the color up out of the paper which is one thing that I do like about Strafe more along with these Alta new watercolors is they will come up pretty easy and then I went back in and redid the color in the bird and in, in the bo body of the little peacock and I really liked it when it dried it looked really good um, I had a few stray lines of watercolor and I just took a clean water brush and literally just erased it and then I let it dry really good now I have a an old bottle of perfect pearls I don't even know that they sell this anymore but I've had the bottle forever and I just mix my perfect pearls in the same bottle that I've been using forever and I just pull it out and like you saw me there just flick everything flick the little drops of perfect pearls across there and it's done um, you can do the same thing with just a little regular spray bottle if you or you can just mix it in a little puddle on your desk if you want to but I, I like doing it on the in the bottle because it, it saves me from wasting stuff you saw how shiny and pretty that was when I tilted it so now what we're gonna do is I've let this dry really really good I set this to the side a little bit and I am going to die cut this with the largest of the stitched rectangle frames that is my absolute favorite and as you can see I'm offsetting it so this is gonna be in the bottom right hand corner for the most part and then I have uh, I'm using my Spellbinders platinum die cutting machine to run that through and die cut it and yes I'm still using the same <laughs> plates I've been using forever and ever and ever <laughs> oh me I need to get new plates uh, but they still work so I'm just not I'm not doing it so I pulled the washi tape off and yes I reuse pieces of washi tape until they absolutely just slap fall apart the sentiment that we're using is from that same stamp set and it is be your own kind of beautiful which I thought just went absolutely amazingly well with this beautiful bird peacock here 
and I thought I was going to stamp it on here, but I didn't want to stamp it over top of the bird and, and heat emboss it. So what I opted for was some light blue paper that went with the background there and then VersaFine Onyx Black ink. Pardon my head, I'm getting it lined up. As you can see, I used the the lines on the back uh, on the on my grid mat along with the lines on my stamping block. I'm not a fan of stamping my sentiments with a misty. I always get them crooked for some reason, so I just I don't use my misty to stamp sentiments. Instead, I use my my desk, my mat, and my and a stamping block with with the lines on it. And then I'm going to go ahead and trim this little strip down. I made sure that it was nice and cool before I did that and just trim this right down. And then I'm going to use some foam tape to pop that up off of the background there. And I'm going to use some light lavender for the cardstock base. And again, I'll link to all the products below uh, in the description and over on my blog as well as the Hedgehog Hollow blog. And we'll have all the links to everything over there too. Now, I noticed, uh, and this is a good lesson for you, I noticed that when I cut my paper, I have a little bit of a ragged edge there, and it's because I need a new cutting blade. So I went ahead and pulled one out to remind myself to do that. And to get rid of those ratty edges on my paper, I just took my craft knife and went down that edge. I went both ways down that edge and literally just sliced those puppies right off. Done and done. Um, so if you do have that issue, just take your craft knife and run it down the side of it and scrape it off. It might give you the chills because it kind of sounds like nails on the chalkboard, but it will help if you don't have instant access to a new cutting blade. I centered this up on the background, on, centered my panel up on the card front there. It has a little bit of a lip and that purple around the very edge of it. And then I'm just going to cut some strips down of foam tape to adhere my sentiment strip. Then I'll add some clear um, jewels there that have that iridescence to them, make it super, super, super shiny. And that will be my card. It'll be all finished. Super simple, easy watercolor. If you love the look of watercolor, don't ever be scared of it. Um, it have fun with it. It, it you, you don't have to do a great big huge background in it. You don't have to be fancy with it at all. Add color. Put color down. Do some uh, do heat embossing like I did here and just have fun with it. You can still get beautiful results. Watercolor is super forgiving. That is one thing that I do really like about it. As I finish up this card with those jewels, I want to remind you to go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And I'll also link to a couple other projects for the September card kit over on my blog, as well as from the Hedgehog Hollow blog as well. We'll have some more beautiful, beautiful projects for the September kit. And thank you so much for joining me today. And thank you so much for the opportunity to do the design team for Hedgehog Hollow. I'm so excited. And y'all have a wonderful day and I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye.